All right, we all know that a lot of builders put in builder grade quality stuff in our homes. And that includes our bathroom fans. And the builder grade ones, they are often really loud, which can be really annoying. Uh, they often don't work well because they're only 50 CFM because that's the minimum required by code, but it's not enough for most bathrooms. And since they're builder grade, they might not last long and you might have to replace them. All right, first make sure the power to the fan is off. And double check it. Next, you're gonna have to remove the grill from the wall. You really just pull right out. One has a little squeeze tab, so we're going to squeeze these together to pull it out. Okay, and then the other one. All right, just like I said, uh, the builders are generally only going to put 50 CFMs in, and that's what they did here, and that is definitely a not that is definitely not enough for this bathroom. All right, so we unplug the fan motor, and then there's going to be these tabs. We're just going to pop them out. Once you've got them all out, you can pull the whole motor and the shroud out. Next, we've got to remove the power. So it's going to be in this little angle box here with the plug, obviously. Uh, and we're just going to take some pliers and pull that bad boy out. Next thing we got to do is disconnect the wiring. This is the Romex uh, the hardwired Romex right there. So we need to disconnect the fan from that. Don't save these, they're not reusable. We're gonna untwist everything. This is why it was so important to take out all the power. It looks like they didn't put any screws in this one, which is crazy to me. And we're just gonna, I think, bend out these tabs here out from under the drywall and it should come out. It's actually uh, staples that they use, like uh, Romex staples, um, but I've been able to pry them out. You just gotta work them a little bit. You know, you know how to remove staples. All right, so now we're gonna need to pull the Romex cable through and disconnect the duct tape. By the way, never use duct tape. Uh, you wanna use metal tape. Uh, so we're gonna correct that when we put the new one in. All right, we got it out. I had no trouble getting the duct off because it was duct tape and it had failed by now. Uh, so it just came right out. All right, the new one is obviously much bigger. So we're gonna need to make the drywall opening uh, a little bigger. All right, they provided the template for us, so we know exactly how big to make the hole. All right, we're gonna tape up the template and cut out the hole with my favorite oscillating tool. You could also use box knife or drywall saw, but I just like this, it's quicker. All right, the instructions say to remove this part from the whole housing. All right, now, now we're gonna, gonna put in and rack it. I follow the instructions, so we're gonna go to the All right, and this is the electrical junction box. So now we need to remove one of these knockouts and which, whichever one you remove is, is up to you. It, it's whichever is, um, whichever works better for where your wire is coming from. But mine, I think is gonna work better coming from the top, just like it was installed. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that one. All right, pull your electrical cable through and make sure you use a bushing and then you're just going to pigtail the wires together, black to black, white to white, green to bare, and then put the cover back on. All right, this one came with a six inch output, so I had to put together a six inch to three inch reducer. And I'm gonna tape it all together with the 3M metal tape. I wish I could have just upgraded the duct, but uh, I don't have 
uh, access to the drywall to do that. All right, so the last steps are going to be taped up, to plug it into this position and then back in. screw it into the bracket that you put in earlier. Get that guy and in there. And we're going to slide the fan and in and set put the other two screws in. You have one of those. Now, there is a such thing as too much. So make sure you use the CFM calculator on my website so you know what's a good amount. I'm going to stick to 130. <laughs> you know, uh, the my nature is to go higher. Um, but I calculated about 110 for this bathroom. So 130 is already a little high. And I definitely don't want to go 150. So we're going to leave it at 130. I mean, that just already looks so much more robust. I'm excited to try it out. All right, so same as when we were taking it off, we've got these sort of pinch clips that will put the decorative, decorative grill back on. All right, looking good, looking good. So no bathroom fan upgrade would be complete without a timer. Um, because you really need to be able to leave it on for about 20 to 30 minutes after your shower to absorb all that moisture. So we're going to upgrade this to a timer and then all the other ones uh, we're going to upgrade while we're at it. Voila! All right, this part's super simple. Just remove the cover plate. Replace each switch one at a time so you don't get confused. Since we're just replacing it with another similar switch, just wire it the same way it was before. We'll do a quick functional check, make sure everything works, breakers don't trip, awesome.